Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. This particular video is in response to some of your comments and questions. I have gotten some great questions and some really valuable comments on the channel and I wanted to say thank you. So this video is actually part of a playlist that I have put together to say thanks. Thank you so much for watching and to let you know that I care and I'm paying attention to the fact that you care. So thank you very much. This particular topic is going to be about a couple of different types of questions that I've got about what spirit is like in the afterlife. So specifically, what do spirits do? Like, what are they doing is the first question. And the second one is, do they have the same kinds of things that they're interested in in the afterlife that they were interested in in the human life. So things like favorite foods or places to visit or favorite songs or that kind of a thing. Do they have that in the afterlife? And the last question that's related here that I want to address in this particular video is, can spirit go anywhere? Can they be anywhere at any time? How does that work? All right, so let's get started. I've got a lot of questions. I'll try to be specific if I can, and I'll do my best to respond. Remember, the responses or the answers that I give you are based on my experiences as a psychic and a medium and as a person that has channeled and experienced a lot of different things with spirit. That doesn't mean I am right. I am always right, and all my answers are right. Of course they are, they're correct for me and my experience. So I encourage you as always to use your own discernment, use your own healthy discernment and formulate your own opinions about spirit in the afterlife and use other resources and other information. Form your own opinions. All right, okay, so now, now that I've done my little disclaimer there about that, I wanted to share with you, let's get going here. The first question, so what does spirit do in the afterlife? I think this question is pretty common. I actually have gotten it multiple times. I think it kind of relates to this idea of spirit guides and angels. Like if when grandpa dies, does grandpa become an angel and watch out over you? Or, um, or, or are, I mean, like how does that work kind of a thing? And so I'm going to share with you that there are lots of different roles in the afterlife. You could say they're jobs, assignments, roles, whatever you want to call them. But I'd say maybe roles in the afterlife. One is that of a spirit guide. And from my experience, a spirit guide is a best friend to your soul. Your soul has a BFF and your BFF to your spirit is probably an energy that you have been with multiple lifetimes and have a really strong bond with. Might be so close to your own energy and you're so used to having that spirit guide around that you probably don't even notice that that spirit guide is around. Why? Because you've had them with you ever since day one in utero and then you came into this world and you needed a friend and that's what your spirit guide is. So it's not necessarily the job of someone that you've been in relationship in your lifetime or someone that you admire or that's a mentor that you look up to to once they pass over into into pure spirit, once they leave their body and their spirit, it's not necessarily their job or their role to come back and be a guide for you. Okay, that's not necessarily what the terms, that's not what spirit guide really means. However, and, and, and they don't become angels in the traditional conventional sense of the term angel. Well, traditional conventional, those are two different things, aren't they? There's kind of a contrasting, there's a whole bunch of information about angels and how that works. Um, but angels, I think, is a common, uh, kind of a general term that we will use as people to describe, especially to young people, how, what happened to grandma or what happened to their dog uh, when they die. And that they look out, you know, because pets are so special. I mean, pets are really special. Like I have a wonderful angel guide, a dog that um, she definitely looks out for me and is a protector for me. 
in the afterlife. So that's very real and very, very important relationships like grandma and, and your dog and, you know, it could be anyone. But we use that to describe particularly younger people instead of just trying to go into this deep topic of death. Because it's hard to describe in human people, like I'm trying to talk to you about it. And it's hard to process and understand, isn't it? And there's so many variations and different views on it and, and different factors that kind of make it complicated and not simple. So I think a simple way to describe it is to say, oh, grandma became an angel, you know, or oh, Molly, the dog is an angel. And then an angel means someone in heaven looks out for you. And heaven means this beautiful place up in the sky where everything's happy, right? And so that's kind of a generally general concept that we describe as angels. But so when, when grandma does pass over, she doesn't become an angel necessarily. That's actually a specific role. But she may very well be in service. So spirit in the afterlife can choose to be in service. Now, they don't necessarily become a spirit guide or an angel. Those are kind of specific titles. However, and specific kind of um, defined, I guess, gosh, it's hard to think about the word even defined. Defining anything in the afterlife is almost... I mean, it's, it's completely, it's, to be honest, it sounds ridiculous when I'm saying it, but our brains have to create some kind of structure, some kind of labeling to be able to have a hierarchy so we can understand. That's the reason why there are names and why there are titles and why there are differentiation, okay? Because the contrast is how we figure things out. Whew. Woo, okay. So what do they do in the afterlife? Well, they might be in service. They might choose to be in service. now. So, um, and their service might be to watch out for your child. So if it's your, your grandma, her, she might choose to be in service to watch out for your daughter. So she's watching her great granddaughter, you know, and just helping to send her love when she needs to feel loved or helping her to feel, just feel really good about herself. For example, things that you would want for your daughter, your, especially if you have strong women in your family, your grandma might be an advocate or uh, an energetic kind of a role model for her, so she would be in service. I've also seen other people, for example, like famous people, take on a role of service as well. For example, if you've watched my, the playlists with the discussions of, with David Bowie, he is like this like really ascended, very, um, he gets it. Like he totally gets all the broad concepts of the afterlife. He is somebody that you can talk to and gives you like a straight answer about questions that you might have about afterlife. He, he just gets it. He just, it's, it's hard to describe. He understands how the pieces fit together. He's a great resource, by the way. And so he's, and he's not even, I wouldn't say philosophical. I would say more ascendant or transcendent, maybe transcendent. He just gets it. And he can, explain it pretty dang well, I do say so. If I do say so myself, I enjoy talking with him. He's got some really great, very specific information and insights that he'll give you. And it's just great. It kind of blows my mind how succinct he is. Because clearly I don't, I don't get to the point and you know that, you know that about me, right? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> so another example for, um, might be, so someone like, let's talk about someone like a Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, known for um, caring for the poor and her compassion and her love and her generous nature and just really taking care of the children, right, and the poor people. And she really just had this incredible service and just, just saw a need and just con consistently worked in her human life to be in service to that need, right, to meet the need. And in the afterlife, so the question might be, well, what's she doing that in the afterlife? Well, with, in the case of Mother Teresa, yes, she is. Her whole thing is families, children and families. She's all about it. And she's all about allowing them to feel in the most highest regard and the most uplifted aspects of their spirit is what she focuses on. That connection, the community, the common bond in the family to raise strong and healthy children the spirit of the children. So she's not focused on the human people anymore, but she's focused on the spirit of the energy. So she's very similar to what she did in the human life. And no, I, she hasn't incarnated, reincarnated yet from what I've seen. I'm looking at her and she's not reincarnated. 
Um, there's other examples too, things that you might be surprised by actually. So like famous people like Prince in the afterlife, my experience with him is he is a major healer. Like part of his mission is to help people who followed him, who are drawn to him, who are dealing with heavy stuff, you guys. I'm talking heavy stuff. Could be addiction, could be depression, anxiety, could be mental illness, could be just really difficult energy, um, self-doubt, um, even self-loathing. He really just is a stand. His energy in the afterlife is a stand for helping people to heal, to heal themselves, to recognize that they gotta do whatever they can do to help themselves and that they are deserving of that. They are worth it. That's been his consistent theme when I work in session, when I do channeling with him. His whole thing is all about healing and, and really being a stand for people and helping them to see the good inside of themselves and see that they're better. And he holds like a higher vision for them and it's really pretty incredible when I do my work with Prince and stuff. Um, so that's his, which is kind of unusual. If you looked at his actual human life, you might have questioned that, but if you knew him personally, you might not, you might be like, oh yes, totally get it. That's exactly how he is, would be in the afterlife because he's not, that's not what he was like in the human life, but in the afterlife, that is exactly what he's like. However, you could look at his human life and see some common themes that contribute to this particular role in the afterlife. All right, so I hope that helps talk about what do spirits do in the afterlife. The biggest thing to know is that they are at choice. You are totally at choice, just like you are in your human life. You are at choice in the afterlife, all right? Free will in the human form, free spirit in the afterlife. You are totally at choice, all right? And you can choose different things at any time, just that's what changes, right? All right, so let's go to the second thing. All right, so the second question was, great too it was so good and i almost i wanted to just type a response i thought no 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 this is perfect for a video and that is about so so do spirits connect still with their common interests and i answered this a little bit in the first question but do they connect with some of the common things like do they do they still like the things they like like is that a part of them or is that like a personality trait or I mean, do they still like, would they like the same foods, would like to visit the same places, that kind of a thing. And from my experience, yes, there is familiarity. That spirit has a familiar tone, a familiar energy. You have to realize that in order to be able to be relatable, spirit has to have something to relate to us, to relate to the human form, to relate to humanity and human life, and that is a that is the memory of the essence of the energy of what it was like being in a body. So if they loved peach pie in the afterlife, that's one of the things they might show me so that you know that I'm really talking to who I say I'm talking to. Or I might actually, or you even, like if you're trying to connect with somebody and you start to smell something like a, a perfume or a scent that is like, oh my gosh, it totally reminds you of this person. That is connection. That is the essence of the spirit making communication, making a communication connection with you. I know it's crazy. It sounds crazy, right? It's hard to believe that. And you try to rationalize it away. But the truth is, is yes, they still will kind of come forward and have those same kind of sense. Now, as far as do they like that? I mean, is that something they really like? I think it's something that's a memory and it's a relatable link. It's a link to them and their human life. So I don't necessarily know that they have preferences of, oh, I like this cologne, or I like this cologne, or I like this type of pie, or I like that type of pie, because in the afterlife, there's no body, physical body, so there's no need to eat, there's no food, you know, there's no, there's none of that. There's no digestion, the energy, it's just simple energy and pure energy. There's no complicated, miraculous body systems like that. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't show up to you with memories or images or through songs or music, things that they've created even in life now. So like if you hear music from a musician that you've been thinking about and all of a sudden it just comes on the radio and it's like never on the radio, that is definitely a connection, a spiritual communication connection, all right? And so they've got to be relatable, you guys, so that's why. So I don't really necessarily think that there's a, a feeling of good or bad or like or dislike. 
because that's more of a persona, personality trait. And although it's true, if you watch my channeling videos, that that's what they come forward, I bring forward as much that can be relatable from the reflection of their human experience as I can, because quite frankly, if I actually channeled famous people as they are in pure spirit form, pure as energy, flowing energy, you would probably not recognize some of the concepts that they would talk about or some of the energy that they would share, the way that they would even feel would feel very different because like, for example, when I channel Prince, sometimes he is so just in this advanced healer state that I don't think people that even knew him would really recognize him. But I know that's who it is, you know, because I know, I know him and I know him as a spirit, not as a person. I didn't know him as a person you know, except what he shows me, except what's public, you know, about him. So it's different. We evolve, we change because when you don't have a body and a mind and, and a, a structured form that you process information with, and it's different, it's, it's different. So, so yes, they bring that information forward so that they can be relatable, but they don't necessarily have, from my experience, they don't necessarily have favorite things or favorite places, but they do tell me, they will tell me if they have a, a special place or a favorite car or that kind of a thing during a channeling session, they will, they will talk about that. And I have seen, I have seen spirit in the afterlife hang out in areas that they, they loved to be in during their human life. And I think that though, but, but here's the big thing, you guys, I don't think it's because the spirit wants to do that. I think it's because that's where we, you as a fan, as a follower, as someone who loved that spirit, you're going to go to that place because that's where that spirit was in human life. And that's where you have memories of that spirit singing on stage or, or doing big talks or whoever it is. And you go there because, or they lived there. So you go there because you kind of just want to feel what it was like when, when they were here. And so you go there and because you go there, you draw the energy to you. You don't draw, you don't, all of a sudden, you, because you're visiting a place like, say, Paisley Park, it doesn't automatically mean that Prince has to stay there and be there because spirit, as I mentioned before, is different. It's more like rays of the sun. It's energy. It's not a form with a body. It's, it's formless. So there's no attachment that way. So that means the light, the light rays of the energy that's Prince can be in Hollywood, in Spain, in Australia, in in at first avenue in minneapolis which is the club that he played in when he was like younger especially you know first out with the purple rain stuff and paisley park and his you know house on galpin road he can be in these places all at the same time because it's like lights rays of the sun easy but it happens because you're there and you're connecting with the energy you're calling the energy you're opening yourself up to feel the energy of those rays to receive the rays okay that's how it works. So I hope that answers your question. That was a fabulous question. Thank you. Very thoughtful, very thoughtful. Okay, so then the third one is, can spirit be anywhere at any time? Yes, and I think I just answered that. Kind of like the rays of the sun, anywhere at any time, all right? That, that same thing goes for like angels, you know, archangels, like Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael. When people are like praying to them, the angels are asking for assistance. Angels don't just go to one place. They're not just deployed to one place and then they got to come back. And it's not like that. It's like rays of the sun. It's like a light it can be in multiple places at multiple times because that's what energy is. It's not limited by human form, experience or existence. The mind will not understand this. The closest most palatable thing I think to your brain will be, think about the sun and how the sun shines over multiple places at the same time. And even when you don't see it in the sky, when it's a cloudy day and you don't see the direct rays of the sun coming down, you know it's there. You know it's there because the whole sky is lit, but there's no one source. You can't look up and see the source of where the sun is at. You're like, oh, there's the sun, there's the sun. You have no idea when it's all cloudy. You just, the whole sky is lit up with sunlight. So that's the same kind of a thing. That's the best comparison I feel like to what spirit is like in the afterlife. So yes, spirit can be in any place at any time. There's no boundaries that way. But 
Don't make it creepy, people. I have to be a little funny here. Don't make it creepy. It's not like they're hanging out with you in the bathroom or anything like that or any of your private places. It's not like that. And it's not like people. It's not like a persona. It's just energy. It's energy. It's different. It's like light coming into the window. It's not a human characteristic personified energy. That's not what it's like. Now, you might have, spirit may very well communicate with you through conversation style dialogue in your mind, which might freak you out a little bit, but if you use a journal, which I highly recommend using a journal, or even a notebook, just grab paper and write it down, write down, have a conversation and write it down because then it doesn't, it gets it out of your head and it puts it out there. So you're like, okay, I'm not just having this in my head and it doesn't feel as intense, you know, or crazy to do it that way. So I would recommend that. Um, and that's a really great way for spirit to speak with you and through you. And in that way too, then they kind of do have personification. So they kind of have personality traits and characteristics and they will use the way that you know them best, the reflection of their human life. They'll bring examples in of their human life. If you're struggling with something like say addiction, for example, and they dealt with that in their human life, they may bring forward some energy or memories from their lives and use their own lives as example and and help in order to help support you. Um, my, from my experience, spirit in the afterlife, famous people or family, they all want to support us because we are all connected. Our spirits are all connected. There is an incredible team of energy that if you allow yourself to just simply believe that that is available to you, then it is, okay? It is. Just give yourself the benefit of the doubt and then allow that energy to support you. And it's positive, it's positive. If at any time it feels like it's not positive, that's your brain, that's your mind. That's your mind and that's fear energy. You don't wanna call in energy based upon your mind fears, the fears of your mind or judgment. So when there's negativity in the mind and you're connecting with spirit, you might get some of that energy feeling that doesn't feel as positive. And so correct yourself, allow yourself to connect in ways that are positive, uplifting, insightful. And you can do that by calling in your healing team, by connecting with an angel or a guide, or by asking someone to intervene, to advocate on your behalf from the afterlife. Ask for an advocate in the afterlife, whether it be your dad or a sister or your favorite pet to help be a guardian for you, to love you and protect you, or an archangel like Archangel Michael, Great archangel, great go-to, great go-to for me. It's like an energetic bodyguard for me. I work with Michael an awful lot in this kind of work. So don't be shy to ask for the help that you need. And remember that you're totally in charge of this whole process. You are totally in charge of this. All right, so these were great comments, great questions. And I thank you so much for adding value to the channel based upon the comments. I really, I, I, I just thank you so much for that. That is awesome. It's incredible to me. And it's so wonderful to make positive ripples in the world like that. And your comments have done just that. So thank you very, very much. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different. I've responded to some of your comments and some great questions. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.